For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Memorial Day Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday morning, May the 23rd, 2015. Van Hutchinson is the speaker of the service teaching on stress, the root of many diseases. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. When you waited too late to start planting the seeds, because that seed will be piled up in the field, because you're, it won't have time to grow before you have to harvest. And I see that so much in the body of Christ. A lot of times when people are about to die, that religious spirit just, they get rid of that somehow. We get delivered from that religious spirit, and then they want God. And as, as I said, if they don't have the sovereignty of God, if the growing season is too short, if God, decide, if God doesn't move in a sovereign way, then He's, He's already given you sowing and reaping, and you've been sowing to the flesh all that time, then you'll reap of the flesh. You go home, go to, go to heaven, be with Jesus, be a better place than you are here. But here's the thing. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. You know all of us make it to the time to be born, but not everybody makes it to the time to die. We are determined to not leave this planet until it's time for us to go. I don't want to, I don't want to stay too long and I don't want to be too short. I want to be on God's time. But we cannot wait to sow seeds until the time is almost right for the harvest. Number six, with patience you can reap in due season. Now, uh, Galatians 6, 8, and 9, for he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh of reap corruption. I'll put that in there just to remind you we're talking about sowing and reaping. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Everlasting life. I looked at that and I said, well, Lord, I'm not talking about going to heaven. No, I'm going to tell you this, everlasting life began when you got born again. You're supposed to, you're a king's kid. You're supposed to be walking like a king's kid here. I didn't mean you're going to have big houses and big cars and all this great stuff. You walk like a king's kid. But he said, come on and say verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. See now, in weary, it means don't be, become discouraged or tired. Don't lose your enthusiasm and grow weary. And when we're doing deliverance on people, I've got a lot more enthusiasm than they do. I just get excited. You know? You've probably seen. We, I'm sorry. I just get excited. I just... I just want to do for Jesus. Now, I owe him. I told you I owe him. And then, you know, I see that. Come on, Jesus. Hey, come out. Hey, come out there. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Hey, come out there. He delivered from my grandson. He was one. And I'm holding him. I picked him up. Sandy was holding him. I was telling him, come out. And he was just sitting there. So I picked him up. He went straight as a board. And I said, come out of him in the name of Jesus. He said, come out of him in the name of Jesus. Don't lose heart. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Don't, don't ever give up. We, we, Sandy said, see, when God got me, he got me as a bulldog. I would fight you, and I am not big enough to fight, but I would fight you. I would hurt you. If, if I couldn't whoop you, one of my friends said that I met him in a fighting situation, <laughs> and, and he came, and he was bigger, I mean, he was a, he was a bigger person than me, and he came and apologized, and we became very best friends. And he told me later on, he said, I am so glad we did not fight. Now, he was, had been a boxer, he was a great athlete, he would have killed me out there, I mean, just literally beat me to a pulp. But he said, I would have never had a moment of peace. Because every corner I went around, I would know that you were going to be there someday with a boy. And he was right. He was right. And, and so, so God changed my desire to hurt people. Normal Hayes said, every, everything you ever saw Normal Hayes right or said, 
a handsome young man came in or a pretty young woman came in. And I said, God, you know they're not all handsome and you know they're not all pretty. You know it, God. Admit it, you know it. And now, every I look at all the women are pretty and all the men are handsome. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I love that, the hurting part, but I still have the bulldog. And then he would say, uh-oh, I see that bulldog. Really <laughs> so now I just sneak it in on the side. Don't grow weary. Passive people get beat. And we, and we, we, see, we see people doing, and are deliverance. And if I can do anything to agitate them, I'll do it. I want them stirred up because passive people, didn't he? Well, it's harder to get devils out of passive people than it is somebody who won't be fine. Y'all find that? Yeah. Are, we, are we just inferior or y'all, y'all see that too? Yeah. Okay. So I had a guy, when I was a physical therapist, I, oh, it's just in front of mine. <laughs> you can take the mic with you. Nah, I'll be running all over the room then. Um, I, I came, in, came to the hospital when I was contracting the physical therapy for the Mullins Hospital. And uh, he, he was a Christian. And, and he had, us, had diabetes, had a bad source of it. And, and he said, uh, first day I went in, I took the bandage off, and I was on a horrible pillow, trying to clean it up, we were trying to get it healed, trying to get some blood in there to it, lighten the blood, lighten the blood, get some blood in there. So I was very proud of this. I was very proud of this one there. And, and so, uh, first day, on Monday, he said, God, I'm going to heal me! God, I'm going to heal me! God, I'm going to heal me! Praise God, brother. Uh, uh, Snoop Wigglesworth, he just said, well, praise God, brother, he just, he worked. Praise God. Wednesday, I was getting him ready, the oracle is good, getting the thing cleaned up, and he said, uh, well, I sure hope God heals me. Well, I sure, I sure hope God heals me. And on Friday, it's getting worse, so on Friday, he said, oh, my God doesn't heal me. You see what happened to him over that time? And I'm not making fun of him. Believe me. I know what it's like to be tired. Sometimes we, we do so many deliverances, and, and as you can see, I'm quite animated with it, and I don't apologize for that. I won't. I'm what I am. Uh, uh, Frank Marzillo said, Man, be true to who you are. That's what uh, I am. But sometimes we get so tired, we just have to take a day or two off and come back. But we don't quit. You can't quit. You can't grow weary. And also he's conducting oneself badly. Don't say it's not working. God, God doesn't heal today just because you don't see it. Maybe he's not healing where you are. Maybe you need to get where he's healing. You know, if God was dropping a hundred dollar bills back there in the room, y'all wouldn't rush up here to me, would you? You'd be rushing to the back and get you a hundred dollars. And you know, I don't understand that. I wouldn't be offended at all because I'd be back there with you. Say it again. Get back there. Send it again. <laughs> <laughs> Snap your pockets. <laughs> never give up before the victory comes. You never know when the next straw is the one that breaks the camel's back, as we say. You never know. We never know when we've come up to the point of victory and we've backed away because of our unbelief and because we got tired. Because some preacher said, well, it didn't happen for you, so it's not, it's not for today. Never give up. In due season. That means in due time or the right time. You understand that there's the right time? It also means that I like this. In one's own peculiar or unique time. There's a unique time for you. Cindy had a, a unique destination seven months from when she started. And it could have been quicker had she done the praying instead of leaving it out. But you see, God didn't beat her up and say, Wow, ah, you're not. I'm going to send you to hell because you didn't do what I told you to do. No, he said, okay, let's make a correction. He didn't say, you're a sinner. Boy, you better fall on your face. You're a sinner. He said, let's make a correction. Let's reread the book. Okay. That's the way God does. We believe God wants to help us. He's not to beat up business. His first line is by the Word. And He'll help you through that Word. And he'll show you that Word so you can do what you're supposed to do and be what you're supposed to be. But you see, you have your own unique time. I can't tell you what that time is. But I know there's a time. The Word works every time. The Word is true. 
John 17, 17, our word is true. It's always true. It doesn't change by generations. It doesn't change by circumstances. It's always true. And it's going to come. Victory is going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. I'm not turning it loose. I won't quit. I refuse to be defeated. Satan is always going to come to try to steal the Word of God. It comes immediately. It comes with afflictions, persecutions, scares of this world, the secrets of riches, and lust of other things. He is going to try to steal the word from you. But don't give that up. Now, those things that he comes with to steal that word, I gave you all that stuff to say, your fame seeds, Satan is going to try to steal those seeds before they can come up and bring fruit in your life. Does that make sense? You understand? You know now why you have problems, right? All right. Now, when he comes with affliction, everything in your house tears up in one day. That's an affliction. Sickness is an affliction. Uh, Persecution. People are being ugly to you. Cares of this world. The first two will lead you to anxiety, fear, anxiety, depression, the whole gap of the game. Uh, the, uh, the sinfulness of riches, the lust of other things. If, if, if the first three don't weed it out, then you'll try to get you to go off and don't cultivate your field. You understand me? But we're not going to do that. We're going to grow that fruit. We're going to eat that fruit. We're going to walk in victory till the day we die. It might not look like victory to the world, but my victory and the world's victory are two different things. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens is people get in stress. Y'all thought I forgot what the name of this teacher was. I got two in. Stress. It creates stress when Satan comes against you. Now, stress gives you tightness in the chest, shortness of breath, heaviness of arms and legs, aching, sweating palms, neck and low back pain, bossiness, Confidentness, confusion, teeth grinding, headaches, pills only sleeping, sleeping too much, hypertension, less fertility, erectile dysfunction, frigidity, painful menstrual periods, ringing in the ears, poor memory, weeping, irritability, negative thinking, critical, impulsive, general weakness, alcohol, tobacco, and drug abuse. That's what stress does in your life. And that's why Satan brings you problems. Now, Medical conditions get created by that stress. See, our model, and our basic model of deliverance says that stress leads to abnormal emotions. Abnormal emotions leads to inappropriate action. I look at pornography. Let's get the room. That's the reason we do deliverance. You know, I love to get around people who do deliverance, but I really have a passion for getting roots. Go to the root. Cut the root, the tree will die. And a lot of times we don't even deal with this out here. We cut the root and it went back to, to, to when they were molested as a child and went back to all the things. And we never can really get that arrested emotional development out. Sometimes it takes a while. You can say come out and they'll give you a manifestation, but they pour in there. And in order to get that, you've got a clean house to get those things, grab them, pull them, jerk them, make them come out, and don't quit until you've got them, got them free. So, if we don't get that out of there, that stress stays in long enough, it develops atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, plaque buildup, thrombus, emboli, pulmonary emboli, carotid artery uh, occlusion, strokes, many strokes, and confusion. And you say, man, I just feel confused. Yeah. You live under stress, you live that way so long, you've got You've got spirits of infirmity that have moved in because of the stress. And they say, well, you know, I've got diabetes. We say, let's get back here and get some of that stress and emotion out. And see what happens with the diabetes. It'll give you things, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, heart attacks, chest pains, valve disease, arrhythmias, slow heart rate, fast heart rate, hypertension, increased plaque buildup, bacteria in the mouth, even short bouts of stress, increases the bacteria that causes plaque in the mouth and they have found in the heart that same bacteria. So, it goes from here to here. A little bit of stress caused it here, it went through the body and ended up here. And you say, well, uh, is that a devil or what? It started with a devil. Yeah. And you won't get it out unless you get that devil. Now, it will give you things like um, increased tooth decay, increased tooth decay, gingivitis, gum disease, because of those bacteria. You'll have things like occlusion in the arteries that lead to organs and they start having failure. Increased diabetes, which causes peripheral vascular disease, which causes people to have slow healing wounds and even amputations. 
uh, poor vision, blindness, decreased sensation in the feet and hands that lead to burns and trauma. And I saw that weekly when I was a physical therapist. They would cause you to have hyperactive stomach, acid reflux, mouth, esophageal, stomach, and duodenal ulcers, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, hemorrhoids. Whoa, wait a minute! You said stress, and now you're talking about hemorrhoids. That's right. They're tied together. Believe me. It causes an exacerbation, makes things worse, of asthma, COPD, the things that Sandy had, acne, rosacea, psoriasis. If it causes infections, a cancer, inflammation, joint disease. Your immune system, even with a little bit of stress, is compromised. And you say, I keep getting colds. I keep getting this infection. I keep having these stomach viruses. Yeah, you're living under stress. And your immune system is decreased. And those devils are moving in with infirmity. And you're always sick. And you say, uh, uh, cast out this devil. I mean, I've got a lot of devils. And we're going to start with the stress. We've got to break the stress so we can quit. If we have wrong emotions, it will lead us to soak in the flesh. Y'all didn't try that together, did you? If you act wrong because you have the wrong emotions, you will sow seeds in the flesh. You see what I'm trying to tie that together? So you got the laws to govern it. We know stress has to be dealt with. Pay me now or pay me later. That brown oil filter right here. Uh, brown oil filter, it's back home. The, the, every time, pay me now, or pay me later. What, I'm just pay me now. Pay me now. God says, stop him at the gate. Because once you let him in, you got to run him down. That makes sense, did not it? So, start daily. It's spiritual warfare. Get them before they get you. We are proactive and not reactive. Most everybody we deal with is reactive. When they come, they oh, swat at them. Well, Fine, that's not going to stop them. You keep swatting because you've been doing that for two years and it hadn't helped. Now let's just show you something else. Warfare. When you get up in the morning, we go after them. Right then, we want them to say, Run, they're up. Run. <laughs> Scatter. That's where they're on. Get them before they get you. Does that make sense? Come on, guys. If you were going to get in a fight, you know it was... You had to fight to get out. What would you do? Hit him as fast as you can. I don't know if there's too many people that walk down alleys in Atlanta, Georgia at night, in the middle of the night, but I did. And some guys ran up behind me. I heard them coming, and I backed up against the wall. <laughs> Ready to go. And they, they just ran out on mine. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this alley, you'll never find me in another alley in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia in the middle of the night. Don't be stupid. God don't like stupid. God get you out of stupid, but he don't like stupid. We're going to pray fast, study, and meditate on the Word of God. We're going to confess the Word of God every day. What God said is real. It's the truth. It's more real than what I see and how I feel. We're going to worship God. We're going to speak to mountains. We're going to tithe. We're going to cast down ungodly imaginations. We're going to fellowship with strong believers so they can pull us up. Instead of getting pushed down and pulled down with the world, we're going to be quick to forgive everybody. We're going to repent to God when we know we're wrong. We're going to live like that every day we get up. We're going to live like you can't get out of bed. Live that way anyway. And we're going to change the way we do our ungodly behavior. We're going to build our faith in daily word study and meditate on the Word of God. We're going to confess our faith and not our sickness. We're not going to be talking about how bad it is. We're going to talk about how God sees it. God said it was this way, and it's that way. And if, if it don't come out that way when I say it the first time, I'm going to stay there. Devil, you're going to play with me. You're going to stay. You're going to pitch to me until I hit a home run. You are not going back down. You will not leave. I break your power in the name of Jesus. We will not quit. We will not give in. We're going to avoid all strife. We're going to avoid gossip. We're going to avoid people and situations that lead us into stress and sin. Don't go over there. If you have had lust in your heart, don't go over there until it won't bother you. When I was an alcoholic and God set me free, after that I could go anywhere around people drinking and it never bothered me. But I'd better not go there before God set me free. I'd get right back into it. We have got to discipline ourselves to live the godly lifestyle. Again, I'll say to you as I quit, we are not sin conscious. We are righteous conscious. I'm not going around for going through. I'm not going under because I'm going over. And I'm not
not going to be defeated because I'm going to win. I'm going to let the positive of God end up all the negative and every devil of hell that gets between me and that victory better bow his knee to the name of Jesus. Amen? Help me. It takes the two of us to drive downtown. She can't look at the GPS, so I have to look at the GPS and she drives. She can't be the navigator. Just forget that. She'll have you. She'll, she'll come out of her stress. You got to. Kenny Rogers was right. You got to know when to hold them and know when to hold them. You got to know who you can deal with and who you can't. Win. We're a team. And after that, I never had so much fun in my life. But God told me, God said, I'll give you two months to, to get out of physical therapy. I had a physical therapy business. I contracted physical therapy. I, had to, I shut that thing. I made it out for two days. So I had a lot of uh, obligations. And God didn't want me to go back on my work. But I got out of there. And uh, from that point on, and see, when Sandy was sick all those years, I was working 10 hours a day. She was so sick. And I nearly lost her two or three times. And we had a divine destiny. Amen. And, and at, the, at the point of that divine destiny, and that reason, one of the reasons I know that God is beginning to pull things together now and beginning to grassroots the people yeah. uh, and, and have the army ready to rise up. At the, at the right time, and her time, God brought her to the place where she could be healed and restored to me my wife. And, and so now we just, we do it all together. And, and sometimes we jump up, we're doing deliverance, and we say the same thing. <laughs> the same thing. I know we think we're reading it off the paper. <laughs> we love that. We love it. It's not healthy. She's going to help me. Uh, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. We're going to get here for this thing for a while. I thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God. It is the truth, Lord. Lord, we're so enthusiastic about you. We're so enthusiastic about the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. Lord, we're, we're, we're just, we want to see people healed and delivered and set free. Lord, we give our life to that. We want to see people free, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we, we remind these devils that they must bow their knees to the name of Jesus. They must bow their knees. And I break your power. Command every devil in here. Separate yourselves one from another. I break up every gang. I break up all the little groups. All the little anxiety devil break up. All the rest of you break up in the name of Jesus. We command you in Jesus' name. Separate. We bind your communication with one another. We bind your communication with the demons on the outside. And we bind your communication with the strongholds in the heavens. We relieve your your assignment against these people. In Jesus' name, we put you on notice. You're coming out today in the name of Jesus. We break your power. We break your power. We break your power. We break your power. We command you that when your name or your group's name is called, that you will manifest and come out. I want them to know that they've been delivered from devils. We command you manifest and come out. But we bind your manifestation for harm against anybody in this room or any of this, any of this property. And we command you when you come out that you will go walk in dark, slippery, dry places. You will go where Jesus sends you. We bind all transference to other people. And especially I put... Any of the children here, we bind anything from coming on these children in the name of Jesus. We command you that you won't transfer to any people or any animals around this place or any of the neighbors around this place or anybody in town or anybody else that you know. We just tell you go where Jesus sends you. In Jesus' name. We decree it in Jesus' name. Alright, we're going to start with stress demons. You know how to release demons. You might not want to manifest. But they're not going to come out if you don't let them come out. you got to push them out. All right? You might have to cough. They might, you might gnaw them out. You might laugh them out. But go with it. Whatever you feel to release them, you got to go with it. Okay? Now, if you jump up and run out the street, that's not... Right. <laughs> cough it, yawn it, burp it, pass gas. We don't care. They come out of there. That's let right. Let them go. Let them go. Hey, we can go for it. That's right. Okay. We come against every stress demon. We command you stress demon. Come out of them now. Come on, stress. Come out of them. Come out of them, stress. Come on. School stress. Family stress. Work stress. Come out of them. Sickness stress. Come out of them now. Come out now. All stress. Come out. Come out. Come on, stress. Poverty.
come out of them. Come on, insecurity. You bite your fingernails. You suck your thumb. Come out. Come on, all insecurity. Come out. You smoke a cigarette. You take a drink. You're insecure. Come on, come out of that insecurity. Turn them loose. All insecurity. Mental instability. Come out of them now. Come out. You got envy. You got jealousy. Come out of them. Mental insecurity. Come on, come out of them now. Come out. Come out. Lack of intimacy. You can't even be intimate with your own spouse. Come out. Lack of intimacy. Fear of sexual performance. Come out of them now. Come out. You can't relate to your own spouse. Come out of them. Come out. Come on. Lack of trust. Yes, we tear down that wall. We tear down that wall. That wall of protection. That wall that's been there all your life. Come down in Jesus' name. Come down. Come out. Come out. That wall that you built around yourself when you were molested as a child. Come out. Come out. Tear down that wall. Come on. Come on.
the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.